there's even specific vocabulary I do not use. If you want me like to make it attractive to right. hire me, yeah. is that worth even saying? Like, yeah, sure. So I don't use the B word in my uh, like booking budget. Oh, <laughs> I have other language I use. What do you say? I say if so. For the most part, people. A lot of my leads go. That's you're, that's just out of my your budget. So I don't talk about the word money or budget. Right. It's like, oh, really? Like, well, tell me more what's in your financial comfort zone or what's in your, Not bad. you know, yeah. <laughs> your, right. what's something that's comfortable for you to work with or yeah. something like that. Like, because I, full disclosure, I'm not managed. I've never had a formal manager. I've done all my bookings myself. I Like you, I've taken gigs from different agencies. I have great rela- relationships with all of them. Yeah. And I, I that's also, you got to show value there as well. Yeah. But when you're, standing up for yourself and representing yourself. I think it's easy for DJs to feel like they're being pushed in a corner to work with budgets, demands and all that. And again, coming at a place of education and telling clients of how to see this service through and how you're the only person fit for the job. So there's little things that I've, you know, taken along the way to use, but in terms of like money, I don't, say the word so after dotted line side oh yeah i say that word budget like like oh you wanted that that's actually right sure. right but like inter- no that makes it's the sense courtship, i've had similar know? things like that too where i'm just like just let me know a number that you feel comfortable you know being in or, or a, pr- a price range or so you know it's not as i yeah. guess calculated as oh, you're gosh. saying I th- but i think I like- but but i think that that's <laughs> smart um approaching it like that you know because same thing i'd rather them just tell me what they have to work with and then I can figure out if it's worth it for me and it's a relationship I want to build upon or if it's just some one-time thing and it's not worth it for me or you know whatever it is. I will say with that strategy which I like I would encourage DJs to then not surrender so once that you know this this whole tale of whoever says a number first loses I actually don't I actually don't believe that entirely these days because I think transparency benefits both parties right I say sometimes like if they won't tell me I'll ask them the budget but then if they won't tell me I'll be like okay I'm usually in this range Range. and then a lot of times they go whoa that's a lot you know and I'm like okay well I'm just telling you things I get for gigs but if you tell me what you have then maybe we can work together and you get someone that gets paid well but I could do it for less for you because we you know, or starting a relationship, but they're, because also they're scared to insult you or they're scared to then say too high of a number. And you know, they're, they're playing the game as well. I, I'll tell you in my rebrand, what I'm also doing so that I attract more of what I want. Yeah. I am officially now saying before we have a zoom call, which now I have embedded in my I guess if you want to call a sales process, I make that a mandatory thing now because I, I want us to vibe in this level. Like right. if we don't, then there's no use for us to continue on whatever it is. And there's no price yeah. tag on that. But for even us to get there, I even say I even say now my rates start at this. And that way it's up right. to you to tell me if this conversation continue on or yeah. if it shouldn't. Exactly. So that way, you know what? There's We're not wasting either of our time. Are, <laughs> yeah, right. And there's just other better suited options for that person. Yeah. And I think... Sometimes we fall in this trap of uh, being over accommodating. And listen, it's not because we're, I think we're not bad people as an industry. I think we genu- we're passionate what we do. We so badly want to be booked yeah. for the money, for the actual act of DJing because we all love it so much. Right. But I also think what people, DJs forget is that we're also, we should also protect our market as well. So for example, if I got a lead mm-hmm. that I could not do, I want to be able to be like, God, I am booked. DJ Spider, a good friend of mine, is very capable of this gig. Can I hand this over to you knowing that this right. rate is acceptable? I would take it and he would take it too. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing on this planet these days anymore that makes me so happy to like give somebody else another 100%. opportunity. Yeah. I, I have love friends doing that. that I do that with as well and I trust 100%. Right. Or if I know this person's good for this or that, you know, s- same kind of thing. Just like, trust me. Because I'd rather keep it in the family too. Yeah. And, um, and then you know what? I think too... Um, self-awareness like or let's say the opposite thing let's say you are available and how how many i've had this happen several times to me where i'll get a lead and you already know while reading that email you're like i'm not even a fit for this gig but right in your mind you want to try to make it work right yeah so now i'm i'm getting comfortable with hey client x this sounds like an amazing opportunity i actually although i'm available i actually think i know someone 
who can even knock this out better than I can. Right. And I think clients would respect us yeah. for doing that because A, you're looking out for their best interests. B, you're giving another person in the community an opportunity. And I yep. just think that cycle of taking care of each other yeah. is so important. And again, the abundance factor, I'm like, okay, that gig wasn't for me. It's totally fine. Something else will come in. Yeah.